basis of yoga is today's topic. So we'll start with the basics of yoga. Basis of yoga, not basics of yoga. Is the screen visible to all? Manikanta, can you see the screen? Okay. Basis of yoga. Let's have some introduction to the topic. And before introduction, let us know why different people have joined this yoga course with the different interests. Such as, if I ask someone, Sir, I want to become yoga teacher, so I have joined yoga instructor course. Some say that I want to release their, uh, I want to release my health problems. To get rid of my health issues, I have joined yoga instructor course. And if you ask someone, I can have a, a certificate with which I can earn money and make money. So some have some other idea agenda. And some say that, sir, I want to move on myself into the next level for my self-progress. So there are so many interests, people uh, with different varied interests, people have joined this course. And uh, let me understand with what interest you have joined the course. With what interest you have joined the course, what is the purpose? Sir, not actually. Tumma tulkom ek kons to yoga bage. Adikhe rejoin na. Okay. Disturb ek kons. Ah, okay. Others. Uh, just wanted. I was doing yoga, uh, but I was not still happy that uh, I'm doing it first is right way, and I'm doing it. Uh, uh, the vibes were not that uh, what I was looking forward to. So uh, to know the yoga in detail beyond what we usually do from uh, six to seven, one hour. Uh, so I thought there is something beyond this. Uh, uh, so that is one objective. And the other one is given a chance tomorrow, if somebody wants to uh, enter into yoga, want to do, uh, I will not be in a position to tell them, usually we just tell them, hey, please join yoga, please join yoga, it's good, it helped me, it has managed my diabetes, it, I got my back pain, so all this, and all we'll be usually telling them in the other groups and discussions. But if somebody says, how do I join, where to do? So here is an opportunity with this instructor course. I think tomorrow, if somebody remotely, if somebody is in or in my own apartment, I can just sit one-to-one -one and try to, you know, inf uh, create some interest with them, Speech. Ultimately, in one word, background. Word. If you want to say in one word, you want to help others. Spread, spread yoga in my own capacity. Yeah. Limitation. First, to know, and your primary interest is to know and uh, grow further. So, there are different interests, right? Yeah. No, all the uh, in detail, uh, then what I am know today. Raghu, sir. So, the, the actually, I childhood dream. I have a childhood I have a childhood dream. 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 I have a childhood I Yoga to know myself first to Nanbagan and Tilkala's Wanda Vido, but as each in the lag of doubt on Sutta, Tilkalado, 
ಅದ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಮ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ನಾವು ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೂ ನಮ್ ಕೈಲಿ ಆದಷ್ಟು ಏನಾರ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆ ಇದ್ರೆ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಒಂದು ಯೋಗ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಆಗಿ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅದು ಒಂದ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಬಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮನಿ ಅಥವಾ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ಕೂಡ ಒಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇದೆ ಅದ್ರ ಜೊತೆಲಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಅಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಒಂದಿಷ್ಟು ಗೋಲ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಟು ರೀಚ್ ದಟ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಯೋಗ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಮಂಜುಳಾ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಸರ್ ಸಾರಿ ನೀವು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ನನ್ನ ಕನೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಇದೆ ದ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡೂ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಪಸಸ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ದಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ದಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸೊ ವೈ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ ಯಾ ಇಟ್ ಎಲ್ರೂ ಹೇಳಿದ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಕಮ್ಮಿ ಮ್ಯಾಚ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಪಾತ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡು ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದು ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಿಜ ಹೇಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಐಮ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ವಿತ್ ಥಿಯರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವೆರಿ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಗೆ ನಾಟ್ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡೋದು it's okay uh, so i'm not <laughs> okay the, <laughs> no i am telling you i'm not giving feedback it is my natural response that is coming out <laughs> okay i didn't expect this <laughs> harshita um namaste anna namaste so, i actually joined because of uh, dance reason i always wanted to do yoga from the day i started dancing i always wanted some other activity along with uh, i mean for stretching and for all those things so uh, from very long time even uh, coming to the health issue part i doctor always suggested me to join yoga but recently i had joined and i she, i mean the teacher was not available to teach in online then i was thinking i, I searched in lot of places then i finally met you in the program then uh, unfortunately uh, not unfortunately darshan anna uh, said the word that you are a yoga teacher and then that day i decided i have to join uh, your class and that's how i joined i actually joined for one reason to stretch out to to become flexible and uh, for the reason of uh, you know for health issues but unfortunately uh, like manjula ka was saying that uh, even the spiritual way to taking yeah of course for uh, dancers also being spiritual is very important but it is taking me a lot of things i'm learning a lot of things in fact um, uh i can tell that mental pressure is becoming very low i'm so happy about it so it's not unfortunate it is fortunate yeah <laughs> fine thank you anna manikanta sir yeah. yeah what is the purpose of joining the course uh, actually i join i i want to know yoga basically i am i asking my brother every time uh please give me instructions to how to do yoga and that all i am not well in yoga he said uh, then he give you a number hmm uh, so, so nishant is your brother yeah okay. previously he, he given some numbers but i am not interested in they are doing something <laughs> I'm not interested and it is helping me, helping me and helping others physically and mentally. Okay. So now, today's topic is basis of yoga. So why all of us have taken to this yoga or we do so many things? Why do we do so many things in life? So what are we doing? Why are we doing for? be happy happy so where is that happiness Within are we really happy with what we are doing a moment of happiness and sat amale solpa uttad mele again we will think of something else matte a lot doing yes some, some things will be happy with some things will not be 
Uh, okay. There are a lot of things that we will be doing every day today. With some things, we will be happy with something. Is that happiness a short-lived, or uh, you Very need a permanent time. happiness? Yes, sir. So anybody, so why is it the karana for every everybody to do anything is what karana sharira we were talking about yesterday, the karana for doing everything. So I, I huh? Expecting something. Yeah, even expectation is for what? That's why we are all confused. Uh, yeah. So we don't know what actually. to do, do and what if we do what we will get so we don't know so what we will first do it then observe it what we get then we will get either disappointed if it is not coming what we actually expected then if it comes expected momentarily we will be okay what is the driving force to do anything what is the driving force to do anything isn't it some karana cause there must be some drive see i help my daughter or i produce children or i i help someone so am i doing it for their betterment or for my selfishness see by helping someone i become happy so i am helping someone if i get that dukha by helping someone do i help isn't it do i help someone without uh, Uh, if i am getting uh, that dukha for myself no right so anything everybody what they do is for that happiness is that which is driving force but fortunately or unfortunately that uh, we are not becoming happy by doing all that <laughs> or uh, whether that happiness is continuing or not is a question mark let's see the process so continuing based on this course question some people want to uh, yeah you, you you all answered the same thing what is there in the slide you want to be teachers to get rid of their health problems wants to make money some want to be a good so uh, all those you have seen i wanted to become a spiritual person i wanted to um, be clear everything and what is that you get by doing all those ultimately is it contentment isn't it it is called contentment ultimately it is for contentment that we are all doing or something else if contentment increases what is that you get that is satisfaction and so on if you are most satisfied what is that you get money or something else if you get more money what is that you get happiness same thing applies to all you do anything that is for happiness what do you get by doing that is happiness happiness is that driving force to do anything hence happiness is the basis of yoga happiness is the basis of yoga why one has to be happy Happy because happiness is our real nature. Happiness is our birthright. Patanjali says, or any shastra says, tadaha drastu swarupe avastanam, tadaha drastu hu swarupe avastanam. Tadaha drastu is me, one who is seeing. Swarupa is my real nature. Avastha is my real state. in my real nature i am happiest person most happiest person but when i am identifying with vrittis vritti sarupyamita ratra otherwise i am becoming 
ident you know i am identified with i am identifying myself with other worldly things and and worried so but that happiness is the karana which is driving us to do any vritti to further moving on hence nobody can ask a question why one has to be happy yake nen happy agirbeku anta yaru question a kelakagalla because that is our real nature that is our right that is our birth right everything in the whole creation has been born because of happiness and sustained because of this happiness karana i was talking about the karana karana sharira sthula sukshma karana sharira sthula sharira sukshma sharira is also because of this karana sharira yesterday we saw panchakosha right annamaya kosha which is sthula sharira pranamaya manomaya and vijnanamaya kosha are sukshma shariras even the sthula sukshma shariras are existing because of this karana sharira this karana cause so why do i take birth because of this karana there is some karana everything in the whole creation has been born because of this karana happiness and sustain also because of this happiness in this chapter you will be introduced to that basis of yoga which is happiness but are we really happy what is that happiness analyze it analyze the secret of happiness so happiness analysis is the basic goal of this chapter objective of this chapter it is this is this chapter is from taitariya upanishad ananda mimamsa in taitariya upanishad there are three chapters or three vallis they call it as three vallis brahmananda valli bruhu valli shiksha valli in that this chapter is from that ananda mimamsa is analysis of ananda from that uh, brahmananda valli ananda valli chapter happiness is the direction of our life goal of life is sukh prapti hi dukh nivritti hi everybody and all the activities that we are doing in life is for these two reasons one is for sukh prapti another one is dukh nivritti hi this instinct is not only for human beings but also in animals and everywhere sukha prapti dukha nivritti hi but is it the case that uh, what we are experiencing in our life worldly life sukha prapti and dukha nivritti i have a question sir yes sir please uh, we evolved from uh, animals to human being as in any different concept whether the modern science or the old science so relatively is animals are more happy uh, or humans are happy or are we degrade generated ourselves in aspects of that so i just wanted to know so next uh, uh, the chapter is on the same thing happiness so our happiness depends uh, happiness levels depend on uh, of course based on the happiness only is your birth so based on the degree of freedom of expression of your prana and happiness uh, the species has its own at manushya loka manushya level at human of course next chapter you are going, yeah, are yeah, going to see that different lo- different lokas also uh, 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 in future based on this ananda okay so because you have asked now i'll clear this question here see based on your happiness quotient only the life is decided in human beings the happiness is neutral that is 1 or 0 okay whereas if you are moving from manushya loka to manushya gandharva loka your happiness level is 10 to the power of 10 to 100 times if your happiness increases 100 times from the manushya loka then you are moving on to the progress life from manushya loka to manushya gandharva loka manushya gandharva loka to pitra loka ajanana loka brahaspati loka brahma loka so till then there are different lokas so loka changes based on happiness so below the manushya loka there is a prani loka sasya loka pashana loka atala sala atala satala anta heltaralla so all those are the below manushya level manushya loka so whereas the happiness level in the prani loka is 
10 to the power of minus 2. That means 100 times lesser than humans. The happiness levels of Pranigal, uh, sorry, Sasya Loka is 10 to the power of minus 4. 10 to the power of minus 6, Pashana Loka, minus. So, so this is how the happiness quotient decides your Loka. From Pashana Loka to Manisha, uh, Sasya Loka, Sasya Loka to Manisha Loka, uh, Prani Loka, Prani Loka, Manisha Loka. Manisha Loka is a neutral Loka where there is a neutrality. Uh, in the degree of expression of your uh, happiness. So we'll see that in a slide. And your book also, it is there. So Dukkha Prapti Sukha Nivritti. Is it the goal? Dukkha Prapti Sukha Nivritti or Sukha Prapti yeah, Sukha Nivritti? Audible Manjala, madam. Yes. Yeah, please. You have a question? Uh, yeah, so if uh, happiness is our true nature, uh, why are we kept away from it? Yeah, that's what is the lesson now. That's what is the lesson we are going to learn. Okay. So keep that uh, curiosity uh, alive till the end. You will get the answer. Okay, sir. Fine. See, goal of life is there are two aspects to be happy. One is Sukha Prapti and Dukkha Nivritti. For Sukha Prapti, we are doing so many things in life. Anything that we voluntarily do is for Sukha Prapti. And the activities which are happening involuntarily are Dukkha Nivritti. Involuntary activities are your breathing, heartbeat, digestion. See, if there does not happen involuntarily properly, and what is the condition? So, Dukkha Nivritti, some many natural happening things I'm, I'm talking about. See, general lagi, uh, the goal is Sukha Prapti and Dukkha Nivritti. We are doing all activities only for Sukha Prapti. Are we doing anything to, to get rid of the Dukkha? You study well, you get degrees, you get a job, you, get, you earn money, you get married, you produce children. You build a house, you build a family, you do everything. Are you doing anything for Dukkha Nivritti? Only for Sukha Prapti, we have been doing everything. Dukkha Nivritti is something involuntary which is happening. Of course, for Dukkha Nivritti also we should do. Okay, the goal is, but in the path of attaining a Sukha, so we are becoming Dukkha Prapti Sukha Nivritti. <laughs> It's becoming vice versa. I think you got it. Dukkha Prapti Sukha Nivritti. Uh, but in that path, when you are getting that Dukkha Prapti, what are we doing to get rid of the Dukkha Nivritti? So, uh, sir, I'm, that's why I joined yoga class, sir. <laughs> when you say that, that's why I have joined yoga class. <clears throat> to get rid of the Dukkha. Of course, this is the involuntary activity. Voluntarily also Dukkha Nivritti is necessary. Okay. So we are in the, that yesterday, in the previous Why Yoga, we were talking about the quest for happiness starts when you are spiritually questioning that. So we are in the era of science and technology. We question everything. We ask elders why we have to go to the temple, why we have to do yoga as daily, why we should do uh, some rituals properly, you know, practicing rituals. So we are rational. We question our traditions, manner, superstitions, customs, rituals, everything. It is wonderful to question and practice instead of following blindly. Isn't it? Moving on, why we have not analyzed happiness? Why we have not questioned happiness? Are we really happy with what we are doing? Because simply we thought that Happiness is in the objects of enjoyment. So we are busy pursuing those enjoyments of object, objects of enjoyment. We are continuously busy in you know, of pursuing those objects of enjoyment for Sukha Prapti. We thought that happiness is in those uh, enjoying objects. So we are pursuing those Sukha Prapti objects only. So thanks to the science and technology, this has been made possible. 
we have been enjoying the objects of enjoyment. But if that is happiness, uh, in, in, in uh, Western countries, they thought that uh, uh, if they get everything in the external world, they will be happy. So they produced so much of affluence, wealth, everything. Even the sweeper, driver, vacuum cleaner, dishwasher in a restaurant all goes to work by car in some Western countries like America. In spite of all the things that they have externally uh, pursued, they have researched everything, they have developed so much of affluence in the external world to become happy. In spite of all those things, has the real dream came true that they are happy? Are we really happy pursuing all those? Are we? Any answer? Not I only just, I just wanted to share. Yes, sir. I, mean, I just related one, so I thought it was appropriate yep, to share. Yes. So one of the Indian US person in California was sharing with me. There was a hall which is meant for disclosures, music, and all kinds of things, which is the biggest hall in uh, California region. Usually it gets filled with uh, 10%, 5%, 20% maximum. So there was a day when it was filled with almost like 80%, which was a record thing, which was unheard of, like uh, uh, the event. So when somebody asked what was that event, actually it was about happiness. So that was something which was conducted on the uh, seminar. So how to be happy. So that is the one event which was crowded by many people, which was a record uh, participation. So we know why, <laughs> how important is happiness and how away they are still from the happiness in spite of having everything. So in spite of uh, going to that big hall, they can join this yoga instructor course so that they learn how to be happy. Instead of joining that big hall, Okay, fine. So I'm joking. But we are also learning the same thing here. So where is happiness? So even the developed societies or advanced nations have done this mistake of not analyzing happiness. Mistake of not analyzing happiness. Example, American society, their main aim is to get enough food, enough clothing and comfortable thing to stay. Also to develop a lot of affluence and well, so that everybody will get the sense of objects they like so that they can live happily. So that is what is the aim earlier. Now, are they really happy with all those affluences, with all the objects of enjoyment? We have developed so much of technology. So I was talking about uh, the technology in other class or maybe your class. Why did we develop this much of uh, technology uh, now? So why, why, why this technological era and this much of uh, affluence uh, was required? See how you have uh, washing machines, fridge, mixer grinders, uh, some all luxurious things. Uh, nowadays, gym equipment, everything. So the banking system, softwares, automations, uh, everything is uh, produced to become happy. Are we really happy? Actually, we are becoming slave than being. <laughs> so just to make a slave so that the economy can actually prosper. So they think more economy, better economy. It's a more happiness. We are not able to hear you properly, Anna. Yeah, yeah, my internet is fluctuating. Yeah, now is it okay, clear? Yeah, but uh, what you were saying, we did not hear. Could you repeat? So what I meant to say is, before this uh, technological advancements in everything, we have seen automation. Okay, the invention of this technology, automation, everything is just because uh, you wanted to uh, be happy and comfortable and have time for yourself. Uh, even after developing so much of wealth, affluence, technologically advanced, uh, so are we really happy? 
that is what is my question so we are working more than what as what we were doing before this uh, technological advancement don't know somehow uh, today internet is fluctuating some of the technologies actually made us slave so the intent was to make us slave and make the economy prosper and so that uh, you know they think a bigger economy bigger countries is uh, a better model but mm. some technologies actually help the for growing more food and like uh, satellites for education where we can reach out today we are able to do the online It just because technology so otherwise we won't have yes, have yes definitely there is no doubt in it it is helping and the purpose of developing all those technology everything is happiness are they really happy i'm talking mm. about western countries the answer mm. is no the answer is big no yeah. because why is that people did not get that happiness why is that people did not create a very happy society in spite of all the richness and wealth is a question mark in spite of all the world uh, wonderful things that they have been able to create in this world why was it a miserable failure to create a society of happiness why is it that there is so much tension and stress why is it there is such a large number of psychosomatic ailments psychiatric problems asthma diabetes hypertension heart problem epilepsy migraine irritable bowel syndrome a series of them depression neuroticism and so on why if we are really happy why there is so much so much of uh, unhealthy condition why there is a much gun culture the drug culture and the terrorism in us yaru yava gen beko avan gan netkondu hogi ellarnu shift madibidodu adhe nanagan hello heli ragu sir sir adhe idu maybe we are last thing namunna navu actually inward hogodru pattu horagade inda happiness na kandkalak prayatna padta idivi yes happiness already existing in us mm. but now now namunna now quest madkota illa we are very one tindi indano ಇಲ್ಲ ಒಂದ್ ಬೈಕ್ ಇಂದನೋ ಒಂದ್ ಕಾರ್ ಇಂದನೋ ಇಲ್ಲ ಒಂದ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಕಟ್ಟೋದ್ರಿಂದನೋ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ ಮಕ್ಳನ್ನ ಎಲ್ಗೋ ತಲುಪ್ತೋದ್ರಿಂದನೋ ಏನೋ ಇದರಿಂದ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಬರ್ಬೋದು ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಹಿಂದೆ ಹೋಗಿದೀವಿ there is something fundamentally wrong what ragu sir is mentioning there is something fundamentally wrong that is what upanishads tell us real happiness not lies in the objects of enjoyment then where it is analyze igigella we are trying to realize that our upanishads have studied this happiness portion thousands of years ago this taitari upanishad has talking about happiness analysis has talked about the happiness and ananda mimamsa thousands of years ago so bruguvarna samvada so all of us get, uh, let us analyze that what is uh, happiness and what is the objects of enjoyment see the eastern culture they have developed so much of affluence and they tried finding the happiness in the external world whereas eastern uh, eastern culture is not that so we'll see what is that in the upcoming slides so all of us get up in the morning we drink coffee horlicks etc why we drink just for that enjoyment that objects of enjoyment we may become happy some people eat samosa some people make cigarette smoke a cigarette some people eat gulab jamun coffee samosa cigarette gulab jamun etc these are all objects of enjoyment that we are enjoying why just we think that happiness is in those objects of enjoyment to enjoy that we are uh, using depending on the external world for our happiness sorry it has the slide has got changed why do we do all these things because we think that these objects of enjoyment gives us happiness 
is really happiness is in objects of enjoyment analyze then how to analyze we are in the era of science and technology what is a special science speciality of science speciality of science is experiment experiment and know the truth so let us do the experiment now so there are uh, objects of enjoyment the first experiment is coffee tea gulab jamun samosa liked by all so i may be liking gulab jamun somebody may not like it yes or no yeah, yeah. so one community ge ishta agide innond community ge ishta agade irabodu one person ge ishta agide innond person ge ishta agade so it is it is not liked by all it differs from person to person probably happiness may not be so this this statement says our happiness may not be in the objects of enjoyment the first experiment second experiment is coffee tea gulab jamun samosa liked by all community no it changes from community to community family to family yes or no it differs from community to community this also suggests that probably happiness may not be in the objects of enjoyment third experiment is coffee tea gulab jamun samosa suppose a person likes he or she likes at all the times for example um uh, it depends on the mood of a person if the mood is good person will enjoy but when mood is not good he will not enjoy there was a, uh, a example a truck driver on uh, the example for in an example is a truck driver there was a uh, there were two trucks uh, on the road on busy banergatta road there were uh, two trucks running so one is in the uh, in the front uh, going on with a loaded uh, vehicle and another vehicle is empty vehicle who is running at high speed who wants to uh, rush there were two friends ramesh and suresh there were two friends ramesh and suresh <laughs> so who were walking by the side of the road uh, but this driver who was honking from the uh, background to overtake this vehicle which is going in the front which is a loaded vehicle who was going slow uh, but from the back side there was another vehicle trying to overtake but this uh, vehicle which was overtaking without seeing he tried overtaking this vehicle the person who is going in the front did not uh, leave him uh, uh, to overtake allow him to overtake see he tried to overtake and uh, suddenly he decided to overtake and took a right uh, uh, no or tried to overtake there were two people from the opposite side the another vehicle came he tried to overtake but up up from opposite side another vehicle was also coming at high speed so in that rush these vehicles ran into the footpath where two friends were walking so the vehicle ran onto uh, the one person and the two friends so another uh, ramesh and suresh were walking suresh died on the spot ramesh was very much disturbed and his friend from delhi came the next day with a sweets e tagolo nan ninige thumba mysore pak andre ishta alve no ninige mysore pak ishta anta nanu ninige mysore pak tagond bandidini tinno anta anda so mysore pak tagond bandidini tinno ninige thumba ishta anta kotre e illa kanu nanage ishta illa i don't know i don't want to eat mysore pak today so why nan ninige thumba ishta anta because you like mysore pak so much i brought you your favorite mysore mysore pak please have it and then no i don't want to have it now i i am not in the mood to enjoy mysore pak anta so that means any object of enjoyment you cannot enjoy when you are not in that mood so happiness objects of enjoyment cannot be same always that depends on mood of a person also when people were dying with covid and corona so if you talk about uh, giving money uh, and the death bed so will they enjoy the money and the food that you get uh, you eat them so that that will not be a situation where objects of enjoyment gives you the happiness so that means the happiness uh, cannot give you objects cannot give you happiness the objects 
it depends on a mood of a person also if the mood is good person will enjoy the objects but when the mood is not good person will not enjoy the favorite object the fourth experiment if we eat one jamun suppose i like gulab jamun a lot so i get that happiness by eating gulab jamun if i eat that gulab jamun one jamun i get some happiness if i eat second jamun happiness should increase will that increase of course uh, in the beginning it may increase if i eat third jamun will that happiness increase further it may be there may be happiness but it doesn't increase or uh, and also uh, you may be enjoying it to certain extent normally this should happen happy if your objects of enjoyment are giving you happiness when you increase the intake of those objects of enjoyment your uh, happiness should increase is it really increasing is it really happens so there is a law of diminishing returns normally when you en- increase the objects of enjoyment your happiness should increase like this exponentially but it is not the case here in the objects of enjoyment initially your object first second third gulab jamun your happiness may be slightly increasing then the fourth fifth sixth gulab jamun it may remain same or if you enforce the person to eat that had gulab jamun in many more numbers happiness diminishes law of diminishing returns whereas if the objects of enjoyment gives you the happiness that happiness should increase exponentially but it, it, this experiment says with increasing the number of uh, objects of enjoyment your happiness doesn't increase nanage one the mobile beko athava one the eno beko objects of by getting my mobile phone one phone i will be happy will this happiness remain longer uh, remain for always until i get that happiness uh, object uh, that i am longing for i am uh, 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 expecting it once i get it this becomes a burden sometimes and this may not be a, a object of enjoyment anymore that will not continue the same happiness when i get this happiness madave aga varugu madave agilla 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 anta adara abhava madave aadmele o aitu anta ond kshana matra khushi aamele so there are various there are different reasons where the, i mean to say objects of enjoyment when you are get it longing for it when you get it you enjoy for that moment and you are happy after okay. that that itself becomes a burden of there is no bachelors in the team there are bachelors so that that will be very <laughs> dangerous statement for them to <laughs> demotivate for their <laughs> to bring their bring them into our club no no not uh, to demotivate i'll continue here to motivate us <laughs> okay. nobody gets demotivated like that <laughs> okay <laughs> see until i mean to say that uh, even marriage is an object of enjoyment if it matters that's not a object of enjoyment here but i am talking about the objects of enjoyment until you get it you are longing for it anything in your uh, life what you are what, what you are pursuing in the external world until you get it so you are longing to get it i want to i want to have it i want to have it once you get it you are happy for a moment and after that that becomes a burden you have to manage it even this this phones any object of enjoyment just like gulab jamun say until you uh, you are lo- i like gulab gulab jamun i uh i have to enjoy this gulab jamun but after some time this gulab jamun becomes a burden for me if you somebody pour, force me to have more than 5 6 7 <laughs> so that will be a burden this will not increase your happiness anymore so that is the uh, uh, important uh, no that i am mentioning any object until you get it you are longing for it 
and once you get it it will be a burden abhava and bara heaviness but that 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 means you cannot be happy with the external world always this this statement says uh, ha, uh, external world is not the cause of your happiness continuing further all this shows that happiness is not in the objects of enjoyment then where is happiness happiness is not outside it is within ourselves and that is the whole essence of uh, the upanishads and the life once we understand this there is a world of difference but what are we doing we are searching happiness outside we build skyscrapers palatial building we make cars tv refrigerator varieties of things to eat but we never become happy why because we are searching happiness outside that is in a wrong place let us see experiment and see it is like a wild goose chase example a old lady there was uh, one old lady who was very poor so this lady was and and held down said she was very poor and she was living in a apartment and where she did not have a, a proper facility and she had only a pair of clothes and one of them was torn and she didn't have money to buy new ones she was living in a apartment a small apartment where there is no electricity also she was trying to uh, stitch that with a needle and thread so there is she is a little quite old also she was trying to insert the thread into the uh, uh, needles uh, hole and while in the process she dropped that needle somewhere and she started searching for the needle she was searching for the needle uh, everywhere the people who were walking on the path saw her searching ajji en hudukta idiya so kelidru so they asked that grand lady, old lady what are you searching so they also uh, started joining her uh, they also joined her and started searching for that needle so everybody searched even they have uh, searched every soil particle uh, around in and around uh, the place where she was searching for that happiness no, sorry not happiness needle so they searched everywhere uh, they did not find the needle but somebody in the uh, group who was who used his intellect and started questioning he questioned ajji where did you drop this needle she said i dropped in my apartment and why are you searching here she was searching outside her apartment where there was a light so she said in my apartment there is no light here there is a light so i am searching here so we are searching our happiness like that so there is one uh, on the telugalli kannadadalli gaade ide ant ankondidivi enandre kankalalle magu nettkondu ellalla hudukta sante ella hudukta sankalo bidna bettukoni santanta edukta ante ant telugalli helthara so there is one uh, so in anxiety uh, in the high speed of the mind we are searching our happiness everywhere when it is there right in our arms are right within us so happiness is being searched like that nowadays so we are like that old lady and anxiety mother we are searching happiness outside whereas happiness is inside we go to a music concert we eat the dish of our choice in the restaurants all the time we search happiness outside without knowing that happiness is inside once we understand this our crave to accumulate things will re- will reduce to go to different restaurants in search of mexican food singapore food chinese food all will start reducing all the cravings will start reducing accumulating wealth starts reducing then there will be a sea of change in our outlook so upanishads tell us if you want real happiness search in the right place look inside that is the next question look inside all this shows that happiness not is, is not in the objects of enjoyment then where is happiness happiness is in, in our in happiness is in inner state of our personality so what is that inner state which we recognize happiness 
example a student reading a book what is happening to his inner state his inner state is in a deep state of concentration and absorbing concentration same thing happens when we go to a movie of our choice 3 hours passes as if it is 3 minutes happily all the randomness distractions worries of the mind etc has gone with that concentration so we feel comfortable we are in a deep state of concentration then can we say concentration is happiness analyze do the experiment increase the duration of concentration say for example an hour uh, say half an hour one hour two hours then whole day concentration increase that movie which is 3 hours to 6 hours what will happen will the same her concentration be same giving you the same happiness instead of getting happy we will get bored and tired kriyate bahulaya sam yadraja samudahritam that is a rajasika guna so will increase that will make you tired happiness is not concentration concentration leads to strain and stress but it is better than the state of randomness of the mind but cannot be considered as happiness slowing down the secret a slowing down is the secret of upanishad say to look deeper into ourselves to become happy we have to ask a very fundamental and deep questions as newton did we miss this question ourselves as we are very fast in our lives so we have to slow down just like newton he question everything see apple when he was sitting in, in a, under a tree apple fell down see he question basically now agidre apple kelag bididre tinbu tokutide so eat and go so but newton did not do that he just question fundamentally why this why this apple fell falling down why not going to left why not gone to right why not to front or back why not to top why only down because of our fast minds mind is so random running at high speeds we are not questioning we forgot to question the fundamentals so when we slow down we will realize what is the truth just for example when you slow down you will you will realize the truth just like in a cricket match a fast bowler running from the pavilion and uh, end and throwing the ball at a speed of 140 to 150 kilometers per hour speed and at the same speed the batsman is also uh, hitting trying to hit the ball but at the nick of a moment something has happened and the keeper and bowlers fielders everybody started appealing and umpire did not know what has happened and batsman also did not know what has happened and there was a uh, uh, appeal a strong appeal we did know uh, nothing was observed then umpire uh, recommended for a third umpire decision the third umpire what he third umpire does he slows down the process it slows down the process it slows down the movements slowing down slowing down slowing down slowing down there was nothing uh, there is no indication to show that it is out or a ball touched the bat but at the fraction of a second there is a vibration in the sonometer graph some in, in that fraction of a second in that nick of a moment there is a small uh, nick Uh, where the sonometer uh, graph is vibrating see when you slow down then the, uh, the umpire realize it is out declared out so the truth is realized only when we slow down the clarity you will get the clarity when the mind slows down so slowing down is very much necessary to understand and realize the happiness but our minds are running at high speeds so when we slow down we understand the so many secrets for happiness just like that cricket match when the first bit of coffee remember when the first bit of coffee touches the tongue when we eat first jamun when the sense object touches the sense organ 
ಸೊ ನಾನು ಟೈಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸೀಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಇಸ್ ದರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಆರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಫಾರ್ ಅನದರ್ ಟೆನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಸಿ if no objection i'll continue i'll take your time for 10 another 10 15 minutes vishaya vishayi sambhogaha so when the sen- object of enjoyment comes in contact with the uh, tongue vishaya is the object of enjoyment vishayi is that which is enjoying vishaya vishayi sambhogaha so both will come together when the object for example that gulab jamun when it comes in touch of uh, in connect contact with my tongue something happens something mysterious happens in the mind when that object of enjoyment comes in contact with that sense organ to enjoy it mind goes to the state of silence a thoughtless state of mind occurs same thing is with the sense pleasure and the sense object you go to that silence in mean, that fraction of a second in that fraction of a minute you are so silent there is nothing else isn't it remember when you are enjoying some objects of enjoyment your mind is not thinking of anything else other than that so you are happy in that fraction of second hence silence is happiness how to know that silence is happiness do the experiment increase the duration of silence happiness also increases how to increase that increase silencing keeping the mind silent for a longer duration so happiness multiplies with the increase in increase of silence whereas that is not the case with objects of increase uh, enjoyment when you increase the uh, consumption of objects of enjoyment and you will lose that happiness burden increases than happiness hence our original state is one of the pure experience devoid of thoughts a state of silence silence is a state of bliss freedom knowledge creativity our real nature is happiness that happiness is in a state of silence silence is that bliss freedom knowledge and creativity which is a source of our knowledge happiness freedom bliss creativity that is called moksha free from all other bondages silence is the causal state of the inner creation called brahman an ideal society in which the ever features are found can be constructed by setting up such a social sorry as brahman the happiness yavag baruthe andre really when you are silent the other day when i asked you to close all your sense organs with the shanmukhi mudra what was the state you are all mentioning sir i am happy comfortable becoming light yen eno helta idre why because the mind was silent then you are happy only when mind is silent ಯಾವಾಗ ಒಂದು ವಸ್ತುವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಹೋಗ್ತೀವಿ ಆ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಮಾಡುವಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಗುಲಾಬ್ ಜಾಮೂನ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡನ್ ದೆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಮೋರ್ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಡಮ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದುಃಖ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಯು ದ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ when you are enjoying that particular object of enjoyment so that silence is which is giving you happiness the first first puff of a cigarette first bit of a alcohol drink consumption so first uh, object of enjoyment first thing anything what you are doing for the first time when that first second first few seconds vishaya vishayi sambhogaha when the object of enjoyment comes in contact with the sense which is enjoying it then the mind is in silence only in that few few fraction of seconds uh, mind is silent and mind is again becoming random that silence is happiness as long as you are silent you are happy if you are not silent mind starts becoming random the dukha starts again 
silence diminishes sorry happiness diminishes so as the silence increases try increasing this silence go to silence for a longer duration aa shanmukhi mudrena dirgha kala edukolak prayatna uh, uh, trying to reach that force so that if if that is a concentration concentration will increase the burden further but say if it is a silence then it will increase your happiness silence is the causal state around that sir one question Just, huh. uh, is all the sensory organs panchendriyas sensory sensory organ is it uh, created by the creator or is it our own uh, evolution so that is one question then second one is if that sensory organs are created by the creator then what is the purpose that means he has given it to use it and uh, experience it uh, if so that is the I mean, just a question about that. So, curiosity, no. Yes. Yes. See, this sense organs and senses are a part of prakriti, not a purusha. Okay, purusha prakriti samyoga is this creation, this body. Purusha prakriti samyoga is this yoga. That is not good. Purusha prakriti. But the purpose of the sense organs, suppose if you don't have these sense organs, what may happen? imagine what may happen you are mute you are zen illa andre whole will be yare enu maartane irilla anusutte you will be in the neutral position you will be in silence position you don't know you, so you will you will not have any for example you are walking you are walking on a road somebody is honking you don't you are not able to hear what will be the situation suppose there is no tongue you are eating whatever you get what will be the condition to the body what may happen to body there is a snake you cannot see the snake and you cannot hear its sounds so what can be what what may happen it is dangerous right you cannot survive no what i mean is even snake will not understand that somebody is stepping on it so that will also lose its so i mean i'm saying sensory organs not just for humans the complete universe if the sensory right. organs are not there these are for safeguarding each other okay their own first first purpose is to know the world outside and to protect yourself and stop the unwanted dangerous things entering you stop the dangers entering you protect your body and existence from the dangers especially that is also prakriti only the first purpose of sense organs is sense it so that you can protect yourself the moment you sense there is a innate uh, mechanism sympathetic mechanism which acts for dukkha nivritti but we are using so sense organs only for sukha prapti okay what is the other question why did the creator create it yeah if it is going to be a distraction for the purpose and if we say that this is the distraction then why I at all it is fundamentally same answer, for, same answer for both the questions So if sensor sensor the purpose of sensor organs is to protect yourself and to know the right things in the outside world but we are using uh, sensor organs for dukha prapti not for sukha uh, dukha nivritti only for sukha prapti when we are using it only for sukha prapti our mind is getting distracted so much the last slide one day on the slide there we'll finish off that and conclude the session last slide i missed it uh, i don't know in which slide you are in uh, 
has gone through. We were in this slide, right? In this slide. If silence increases, what happens? As the silence increases, your happiness levels increase. We were in this, society, this slide, right? An ideal society in which the... One more slide we missed. Our original state is our... No, Linda. So, law of increasing returns. Happiness is a law of increasing returns, whereas... Objects of enjoyment is law of diminishing returns. When you increase the silence, your happiness increases. Hence, our original state is one of the pure experience, devoid of thoughts, a state of silence, uh, bliss, freedom, knowledge and creativity. Silence is also the causal state of entire creation. This Brahman. An ideal society in which the above features are found can be constructed by and then one slide miss uh, freedom, bliss, freedom, these are the features. An ideal society in which all the features, that is, bliss, freedom, uh, power, wisdom, can be constructed by setting up such a social norms, values, systems, habits, customs, manners, etiquettes, etc. Such a society progressing towards the silence and social values. And direction providing most congenial atmosphere for such a growth can be called a spiritually oriented society, what India stands for over centuries. Further, oh no, there is some um, misalignment in the uh, slides. Okay. If silence increases, what happens? If silence increases, happiness also increases. As happiness increases, what happens? We reach a different layers of consciousness. How do we know that? Taitri Upanishad defines that the layers of consciousness, what our uh, uh, Vyasa sir had asked me in the beginning of this class. So, the happiness layers, we reach a different layers of our consciousness. If happiness increases, if happiness decreases, there are Below Manusha Loka also there are some layers, Prani Loka, Sastya Loka, Pashana Loka, like that. This is the evolution curve as your happiness level increases. So in the Manusha Loka, it is neutral. So use your wisdom. In the Only in the Manusha Loka, there is a, a wisdom, a buddhi. If this buddhi, use this buddhi to increase your happiness in a proper way. So, as the happiness increases by 100 times, Manusha Gandharva Loka, Deva Gandharva Loka, Pitra Loka, Ajanana Loka, Karma Loka, Deva Loka, Indra Loka, Brihaspati Loka, Prajapati Loka, Brahma Loka, like that there are different Lokas based on your happiness level. This is from Taitari Upanishad. And below Manusha Loka also there are species. So, that is how we have evolved from microorganism level, from uh, nuclear uh, uh, particles we have evolved as the degree of expression of uh, freedom increases to express yourself and uh, as the freedom to express your prana increases your happiness level also increases when your mind is running at high speeds there is less freedom for prana to express itself when you are in silence there is a freedom to express itself as the freedom increases, happiness also increases. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Freedom increases with silence. Freedom from what? Freedom from all the bondages, cravings, uh, instincts. So that's how this is the Manusha Loka. As your happiness increases, you are reaching you. These are all designations. Even in the Manusha Loka only you can see Gandharvas, Manusha Gandharvas, Deva Gandharvas and all. Uh, sir, can you please repeat one more time? Freedom, Mathe, Prana are terms. With respect to that. See, uh, the features of silence, freedom, 
when you are silent the prana shakti prana again i'll repeat this when i do the concept of prana so then you may understand it right because you need to understand the concept of prana also which is more of a physics physical energy so vital energy life force which is called as prana prana siyadam she sarvam tridive yat pratishtitam anta taitari so prashna upanishad in mantra will explain the concept of prana in a right way and there based on that prana as freedom to express itself maybe this context is not right to uh, give the complete understanding of this lokas so once we talk about that uh, prana and different uh, lokas how happiness increases with expression of prana so we'll stop uh, here and if you have any questions you are having the uh,